Here we are again. Welcome to the Josh Potter Show. Thank you so much to everybody who watched last week's The Debut on our brand new YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, please to be subscribing. We would love to have you. And uh, it's, it's growing every day, and I'm so thankful to you if you already have. Now to give some plugs real quick, I'm going to be this week in Omaha, Nebraska at the Omaha Funny Bone. So you can go to my Twitter at J underscore Potter or my Instagram, which is at Josh underscore Potter. In the link tree, you'll find tickets to that show. You'll find tickets to June 9th in Tampa, Florida and June 10th in Orlando, Florida. Those are my shows. And today it looks a little different than last week because we have a special guest here today from the Honeydew and the Nightpan Studio, which houses this program. It's Ryan Sickler. All right. Listen, <laughs> I'm proud of you, dude. I'm proud of you. I just I'm, want to say thank you so much for having me here. It's like uh, you brought me in from the cold. I appreciate it a great deal. And uh, I, it's been very welcoming, and it's made the transition so much easier. And so thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, I'm First of all, I'm very excited to sit in the studio where we do Honeydew and do another show out of this. I think that's fucking awesome because we're still within a year of being looted and everything else over here. That's wild, store. yes. I came here just after that happened, and I remember it being like a traumatic Yeah, it was situation. pretty fucked up. Um, so I'm very excited about that. And Tom and Christina were so um, gracious in helping me transition that um, there was no way I wasn't going to pay that back. So. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And Yeah, yeah no, I mean, thank you to them for doing this, too, because it's given us like a satellite situation and now our own little home which is wonderful and i love what you've done with the place yeah it looks a little different people like it at home too they like this curtain they some people said it's reminiscent of like an isis beheading video which i think (laughs) is perfect for me and uh you know little daniel little daniel pearl in my eye (laughs) so i mean that's right up the alley for the aesthetics but uh is it weird it's like you're playing a home game but you're in a, an away team. Like you're yeah. wearing the away jerseys. I'm the Lakers and you're the Clippers. It's kind of like there was like game. a a snowstorm in Minnesota or something. We have to come to your place, but you have to wear the white jerseys. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> that kind it of It feels thing. good, man. It feels good to see this thing thriving. Well, thank you. And yes, I'm getting more comfortable with uh, the surroundings. We've brought some things over. We've brought the nice boy clock. We've brought John Otto with us uh, here to let us know about. Uh, Gee, if I hear about them again, I'll throw up. You know, he's talking about the uh, inner city blacks. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And of course, thank you for letting us use a Sean, by the way. I was going to say, and of course, you got Asha back there on the wheels. That's steel. right. And we yeah. get to hear from uh, a Sean a little bit here and there, which is wonderful. Is and he going to be on camera? Are you going to be on camera, Ash? I think eventually we're going to build to that, yeah? Yeah, eventually. Eventually. Yeah, once eventually he, once when he, he gets leaves. this thing yeah. locked down. <laughs> <laughs> once, he's got, once we get everything locked down, we'll get a camera back there and we'll get a camera on him as well. Uh, but did you have anything else you wanted to plug, by the way? Because uh, just the Honeydew podcast. RyanSickler dot com is my website. Ryan Sickler on all social media. Please subscribe to the YouTube. Um, you know, in just the the short year that we left YMH, uh, we're almost at a hundred thousand subscribers. So I Wild. too want to say thank you guys for supporting the show and uh, all the great messages and the kind words you send. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, now we just had, I just talked to you outside about this, the Baltimore Orioles, yeah. your baseball team. No, no today. No, no today. Almost a perfect game. Should have been a perfect game, but hey, a Do no you, are hitter. You, are you your big Orioles guy? Because you yeah. were saying about the, and I don't know many other comics, let alone, I don't know many other human beings, let alone comics who are following baseball. Yeah, I'm following the Orioles. That's uh, it. And a little bit of baseball. I'm not diving in like that right now. No, I'm trying to get out of this pandemic and get out of the house and all that shit. I uh, I do like to listen when I walk and stuff, but you know, a baseball game's three fucking hours. It's I a commitment. It. <laughs> I got I got enough for you know a handful of those throughout the year, especially when you're always losing. You know what well, I mean? Well, that's true. It's tough uh, if you watch one particular team and they're not. And I know what's going on with the Orioles. I know they're in a rebuild mode. So I'm watching. I'm paying attention. I love John Means. Uh, he's been pitching great all fucking year. Trey Mancini looks like already the comeback player of the year. Hell Dude's yeah. Out with cancer and back now already. Could you imagine bombs. that? If I had cancer, I wouldn't. 
I wouldn't do this show. I wouldn't be able to do anything. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. let alone play baseball. He's hitting hundred mile an hour fucking <laughs> He's fastballs. He's six home runs already it's, this it's, season. It's insane. So I, I love the Orioles. I'm waiting for them. I do think they're going to be good here in a few years, being rebuilt. Um, but we'll see. So that was exciting because it hasn't happened for like I don't know what they said, fifty two years, something from oh, like yeah, Jim Palmer did it the last. I uh, that that Trey Mancini story is so crazy to me because I think about that like if I have like a sore throat, I don't want to do shit. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. this guy's got cancer and he didn't let it defeat him. Not only did he not let it defeat him in life, he didn't let it defeat him in his dream to play professional sports, which Fuck has a that. finite time. He didn't time. even drop off. You not know even I mean? a little Forget bit. any of it. He didn't. How even long was drop he off. out of the of the team for? Like out of commission? For? I think all of last season. Which right. I, I mean, not to silver lining. It was the if you're going to be out a season, that was the season. That was the it. one to do it. Right. Exactly. That was the one to do it. That's that's. And then he's compromised anyway. Obviously, going through cancer and stuff. So you know. It's Shit. That, yeah. And he's dealt with it, and he's back. And, and he's, he's hitting home runs. Killing it. Killing it. Unbelievable. Killing it. Yeah. Uh, I love watching baseball because I'm having a midlife crisis, I found out. Uh, and this you is hit part menopause? Of I did, yeah. I, thir- hit I hit 35, and I'm just like, I don't know what's going I don't have a family. I don't have like a, a loved one. So I'm just watching baseball and like immersing myself in it like I'm 14 again, which is so weird. I don't even know how to like, I'm not proud of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like something that is happening. So I'm like, oh, look at Boba Shet, you know, or something like that. But I'm like, this guy's a ch- now it's like they're kids. So that's they're the weirdest ki- part yeah. to me is I'm like, whoa, look how cool. And I'm like fucking 15 years older than them or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so it's fucking me up. I don't know. Do you have any of that? Do you have any of that moment like where you watch sports and you're like, this is a child? And it yeah. Fucks you I, up? um, yeah, I stopped wearing jerseys because I was like, I'm wearing a, a jersey of a guy. It's 22 on my back. <laughs> wearing this kid's I'm name wearing on my just back. to support the team. I'm going to probably stop wearing the jersey. Because you know? I, I always thought it was cool to be like, I remember like when I'd have a guy win me money or something, I would be like, I'm going to buy his jersey, like just a mm-hmm. shitty one just to like wear around the house or something. And now I am having, I'm like, this is a child. I'm I wearing- like retro shit though. Like I'd rock a Randy Moss or a Johnny U or something like that. But I think today, when you go and wear a jersey of a guy today, uh, it's yeah. So I stopped doing that. Um, <laughs> I um, I don't know, man. I'm a dad now, so everything's nostalgic to me. I've got yeah. my daughter watching games with me, and I'm wishing my dad knew the Ravens, but I'm teaching her about the Orioles, but it's kind of hard to get excited about a team that sucks. Yeah, no, for sure. It's you just know. you got to get them excited about ba- That's what I want to have a kid for, so that I can like watch baseball games with <clears> them. Yeah. I don't want to do the other stuff, though. So it's like so I'm going to be that dad. I'm yeah. going to be the one where it's like, all right, because obviously I won't be with the mother probably. I'm just forecasting my life at this You see point. how it's going to go. I'm just going to be a single dad. I'll be able to come over. We'll watch baseball. I'll be that dad. I think <laughs> I you'd be a good single dad. People though. say that all the time, and I don't know where they get that. They don't say you'd be a good dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They say you'd be a good single dad. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make a great stepdad someday. I've heard that one, too. <laughs> you know, you'd be a great second husband, man. How are we doing on the nice boy clock, Ash? We are at eight minutes. Oh, f- <laughs> God, the nice boy clock. I said <laughs> too. I'm already blowing it. But hey, it's late enough, and we don't have ads on this thing yet, so we're just preemptively trying to not get demonetized. But uh, let's continue with the sports, because... Um, there's some interesting stories today I want to get your take on. Beep, 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 beep. It's the OG. Hey, I'll hear it. I'll hear it. And if you want to remix the the uh, the old sounds, as we had plenty of over the course of the last couple of months, Josh Potter Show at gmail.com is where you can send those in. You can send your queefs your music, your uh, instrumentals, whatever you have. By the way, that's the new email. So if you're still sending it over to the old email, that's why I haven't gotten it yet. So please write that bad boy down. But in sports today, and it's happening like right now, it's been a a story that's been unfolding this past week about Tom Wilson on the Washington Capitals. He did a scumbag move. You know, he fucked with people on the the Capitals. He grabbed Zapparin's hair. He threw him on the ground. He was just doing shitty things. And it caused an uproar in the NHL. People went to Twitter and they were like, this guy should be taken out of the game. He should." He didn't even get a suspension. He got 15 minutes of penalties, which is like, that's a pretty big penalty. 
in hockey. Yeah. That's like a double major. Um, plus. But, like, uh, I don't think he got a game misconduct either. But he definitely didn't get suspended. And the Capitals tried to have a little fun with it. You know, they were like, they put out a tweet that was like, Tom Wilson's living rent-free in everyone's heads or something like that. And everyone's like, that's kind of a bad look. So they deleted it without much fanfare. And then the Rangers, the pers- the the people up in the front office of the Rangers, the GM, they put out a statement saying that the rules committee or the safety committee, I forget the exact um, name of the like organization that hockey has, where it's... You know, it's like the rules committee or something like that. It's mm-hmm. the thing where they watch and they go like, that's a suspension. That was headhunting or whatever. They put out a statement saying all the people on that board should be fired because of the ruling of Tom Wilson. They put out this long winded, like woke statement on Twitter. And now today that general manager of the Rangers got fired for that, for making that statement. For saying, hey, you all should get fired? Yes. He got fired. He got fired. <laughs> now Chris Drury is running the New York Rangers. <laughs> But it's like this weird, there's this weird chasm going on where people are on one Good side. Word. Yeah, it's like this, I mean, it is, it's a chasm. It's in the sport because of the fact that there's some people that are like, what he did is obviously heinous, but it should be taken care of on the ice. That's it. It's it's part of the game. It happened in the game. Settle it in the fucking game. And now that we're out of the mm, nice boy clock. It's dirty time. I can say this. The New York Rangers front office, a bunch of fucking queefs. Yeah, a bunch of pussies. Bunch of pussies. This is fucking hockey, hockey, dude. Yes, exactly. And if someone's a pest on the ice, Matthew Barnaby was a famous pest for the Sabres. Every team has had a pest. If someone's fucking with your stars or does something fucked up, you make it known on the ice. You fuck with their stars. <laughs> you know what I mean? You yeah. get retribution that it's way. It's the rule, unwritten rule. You hit my guy, I'm hitting one of yours, or I'm hitting your star. Period. And, uh... This is what they said, like, uh, uh, Keith Olbermann had to come out because any any sort of, like, Keith Olbermann sniffs out a woke take and he has to jump on it. So Keith Olbermann tweeted um, about the New York Rangers or about Tom Wilson. He said, the NHL must ban Tom Wilson for nearly killing Artemi Panarin. I don't know these players, by the way. I'm, I feel bad. I just haven't followed. Hockey just... Because of reasons like this, I haven't followed hockey as closely because it's just Miles changed Garrett so took a football helmet and swung it around and tried to kill <laughs> literally, a man. That is, literally, that happened. If you did and that to me here in this room, I, you would be in jail for jail. assault. It's absolutely assault. With I mean, you could argue deadly weapon. You crack that guy's skull with that helmet, you could kill the guy. You could argue it. It's a weak argument. Of course. But you could fucking argue it. If he made solid contact... Yeah, then it would be. With Mason Rudolph, he would have concussed him at the very Oh, least. he would have cracked his fucking skull. That big guy with that fucking helmet, yeah. the force he had. Those but what does like the NFL pounds. do? It's all this. His career is over. This that he's playing again. He came. I mean, it, it was again. lucky for him that it was at the end it. of a season. And then we had the off season where a bunch of other shit happened. You know, a couple players beat their wives or something, and then mm-hmm. we forgot all about it. Right. And it was also remember the thing with that incident that I thought was funny was it jumped to Mason Rudolph said the N word. Yes, it jumped to that. That's right. And I mean. For anybody who knows anything about these, and we talk about it on this show all the time, open mics, hot mics, the NFL, all those players on that field are getting like recorded in some capacity, the whether it be from a shotgun the mic, coaches, a the broadcast players, mic. Absolutely. Yeah, so there would have been some, someone else would have corroborated that whole thing, not to mention like there were other players on the field who could have heard that if it did, if it indeed happened. But yeah, so Mason Rudolph got to like, canceled for getting bashed over the head essentially which yeah. was pretty wild um, what I'll say Miles Ga- oh no Mason Rudolph did. Mason yeah, Rudolph no, I, I, the, uh, I don't even know if he plays he's the backup quarterback he got cut uh, because he finished the season pretty poorly for yeah. the Steelers and they were like eh you're out of here he, remember him and Duck Hodges were going back and forth that year it's fucking hockey it's bullfighting it's gladiators it's UFC it's boxing it's football just fucking leave it alone well today and I'm glad Chris Drury by the way I have uh, checkered history with him because he was with the Sabres and he was one of our stars through our glory years and the Sabres neglected to re-sign him like they just let him go just let him walk after we had marquee seasons and uh, so I, I didn't hate him for that it's our fault but I'll always kind of like it'll always sting when I see him now he's a part of the Rangers organization that's where he got that's where he ended up going to and I don't think he'll have anything to do with the Sabres ever again 
down the road. They just treat their alumni like trash. So it, I, but he is a hard nosed hockey player. And tonight, as we were beginning recording this, I looked on Twitter and the Rangers had like five fights already with the Capitals and the game's not even over. So they're taking care of it. Yeah, they're handling it. As they should. But we were talking about baseball before. And I think this is interesting because, like I said, these are like children, you know? I think it's funny that a lot of them are like gamers now. And it's coming out more and more because of coronavirus and they can't go like out and about on the road. But I don't know. What would you rather your athlete be doing? Playing video games with their buddies in the hotel between games or going out to like strip clubs or something? Definitely video games, but I will <laughs> tell you why. Okay. I read, this was a handful of years ago, that um, a lot of the young NASCAR drivers were really into the video games because they swore that the accuracy of the track was like there. Like it, the research had been that, um, you know, great and that detailed that they were able, they believed, to get a leg up on anyone else because they had familiarity with that track in simulation. Yep. Um, and then you started to see these younger guys winning, winning, winning. So I believe that they know what the fuck they're talking. They they would say if there's a divot now in Talladega, that motherfucking little divot's there. So I no, believe yeah, they, it. I believe it. That simulation software, and I forget who creates it, um, is magnificent. I want to I'm never going to own a car again. I would love to. I'm never going to own a car again. I used to have it for like a PC actually, like way long ago. But obviously it's come in the last 20 years so much further. But I, my dream is because I'll never own a car again. I want to buy like a 20 grand simulator like that with the hydraulics in it and everything and experience the tracks away because they are so detailed. It's just like any, it's just like any video game. You play MLB the show and, and the ballpark looks like the ballpark oh, yeah, you know what like I mean to there. a detail yeah. so they can do that with tracks and stuff like that I just think it's interesting I kind of like when my athletes party you know I don't really know well, if I hang want on them. now as a fan I'd rather my athlete be partying as a GM or a coach well, yeah. I'd rather have you back at the crib on the, on the video game my theory though is like you know you see these teams that don't have team chemistry and I'm thinking about the Mets a lot lately I've been watching a lot of Mets games Jacob deGrom is a phenom and he's a special talent a special generational talent, but the Mets are losing him games and they can't seem to, you know, get the ball off their bats. I think they need to just have group orgies, like team orgies. Team orgies. Yeah, like, and if you're married or whatever, you swap your wife, your girlfriend, <laughs> you let, you know, Michael Conforto in and fuck your wife. Black Camaro is bringing his of, hog in and railing your wife. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some guys you want in more than others, you know. Do I want J.D. Davis to come in or do I want, you know... So well, back in the day, I had buddies tell me that uh, you remember the the year that Jamal Lewis ran for over two thousand yards. He was just a Mack yes. truck that year. It was unbelievable. I told Segura this; he loves it. And I, my buddies swear that they would see him on weekends in titty bars smoking cigarettes. And I'm like, this guy's running for two thousand yards. How do you think right he now? ran for those two thousand yards? It's those carcinogenic lungs, baby. Titties and cancer. Titties bro. and sticks. <laughs> titties and sticks. <laughs> Smoke a bat, look at a titty, and then run for Challenge fucking two touchdowns. The record, and he's out there. And I'm like, why don't you just tell him to put the cigarette out? He could get it. Dude, we had a kid on my soccer team that was so fast, and he smoked like two packs a day. Yeah, we had that kid too. He'd smoke in between games and like whip. We just suck him down too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this kid would run his perimeters with a cigarette. I thought that was crazy, but yeah, I mean that's just a special animal, and that's what I like. I love those guys mm-hmm. more than I love the guy who's like, you know, I don't eat Tom Brady. I don't eat a strawberry. It's like, oh god, what kind of life are you leading? You know, you have all this money and fame. That was and you Tom Marinovich. Remember Tom Marinovich? Oh yeah, he was like, uh, but then USC he quarterback lost his mind. never had sugar. And Never then lost his mind then he and had, his career and his life. And he might even still be in prison. I think he's good now. I saw a documentary where he's like, okay, now I think. Is he? Give, it a, give him a goog. Give him a Snickers. Yeah. <laughs> Todd Maridovich. It's a tough spell there, Sean, but let's see where he's M-A-R-I-N-O-V-I-C-H, at. M-A-R-I-N-O-V-I-C-H, I believe it is. M-A-R-I-N. But yeah, I just think if the Mets run train on each other's wives and girlfriends or just have group sex... They'll have more of a you chemistry, more, more of team a chemistry, you know? More team chemistry, yeah. Basketball players do it, from what I hear. Yeah, is that right? I think so, a Where, little bit. What are you hearing? I hear little things, what you know, you little trains and such. NBA trains? Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the sun's blowing loads into one lady, seven suns. Definitely not. 
That's definitely not it. This yeah. is good. Put this on the screen. <laughs> Put Tom Runovich. What up. is that? <laughs> Who is that guy? Is that, that a real estate market. guy or like t- Tucson? What the fuck was that? There, there he is. There he is. There he is. <laughs> yeah, this guy went from not eating sugar to consuming mass amounts of crystal <laughs> yeah. meth. Like in a year. And robbing homes and shit. Like <laughs> yeah. all he needed was some Kool-Aid. You know what oh I mean? Growing up. God, a hug, the poor kid. Some Kool-Aid and a hug, man. And Does it say you. where he is today anywhere? I know we have images. <sighs> Is that him over there? No. That's him, dude. I mean, have you ever, there's a 30 for 30 about Todd Marinovich. Is there? I yeah, it's pretty good. One. And it shows right. like now he's like surfing and shit. He like Oof. surfs. And I think he's clean Fuck. from the end of that documentary. I don't know. If maybe he's relapsed or something. Ryan Leaf is like doing uh, correspondent work now. Do you know that? He's doing like analysis. Him and like Dan Orlovsky are the wildest analysis I've ever seen. I'm like, you want these two guys doing an analysis? The guy, I'm, I'll never forget Ryan Leaf snapping in those locker rooms. Get away from me. What does he say? Get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> by, by today's standards, that's still wild. Yeah, it is. But yeah, no, I mean, I just think that, uh, oh, what I was getting to with that was like, now these kids are playing video games, but we have um, a couple of them got injured in Major League Baseball. Uh, in the game? Yeah. G- uh, Jesus Luzardo, who's like a, a pretty good batter for the Oakland Athletics. Like, he's crushing it. He's a power guy. He was playing Call of Duty, and evidently he slammed his hand on the desk and has a hairline fracture now in his hand. No. While playing, like, he got mad or something, and then, but that, it's all punched very the wall. He punched the wall. That's what they, 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 they don't go into detail. It says here, Oakland Athletics left-hander Jesus Luzardo will be off the mound. Oh, no, he's a pitcher. I'm sorry. I was thinking of the of, of a different person on that fucking team this guy this guy throws heat though he's a relief pitcher so that's even worse for his yeah. hairline fracture uh but he's also going to be off video games too he's out indefinitely after breaking a pinky on his pitching hand when he thumped a table while playing a video game before a start on saturday so he's just like getting ready for the game playing call of duty or something and then he jacks his hand could you imagine you're a pitcher and you're just like fuck this game and you fucking <laughs> jack you ruin your life because of playstation uh, an x-ray after an 8-4 loss to the Orioles showed a hairline fracture and Luzardo was put on the 10-day IL list. Oakland manager Bob Melvin said he didn't know how much time he would miss or whether he would require a cast or splint on the finger. He was hopeful the pitcher would still keep his arm in shape given the location of the break. Before the game, he was playing a video game and accidentally bumped his hand on the desk as he was playing the game. Okay. I bumped my <laughs> hand on the desk. Here. I yeah. just bumped my hand on it. When you're like, it didn't break shit. Oops. <laughs> and I'm not, oops. I'm not an athlete. Yeah, and my bones are weak. I don't drink milk, <laughs> and I don't fucking. You have to really slam your fucking hand down. Yeah, you really got to slam your fucking hand down. And he seems like a rage guy. Or threw something. Uh, he came in, was a little bit sore. Training staff checked him out. We threw him in the cage before he went out there. Watched him warm up. He was comfortable pitching which is interesting. The training staff was comfortable uh, with him pitching. After the game, we got an x-ray, and there was a hairline in the pinky finger. So he did pitch that game a little bit, and they lost 8-4 to four to the Orioles. I don't know if you remember hearing that game or watching it, but he uh, then they were like, well, that was fucked up. Let's take a look there again. And then he had a hairline. So I don't know. Maybe he could have been not broken before and then fucked it up fucked it pitching. up while pitching it's yeah. possible but he's not the only one upset with uh, video games at the moment. Blake Snell was streaming on Twitch very recently, he was streaming uh, the new video game, which I play on Twitch quite a bit, twitch.tv slash Josh underscore Potter, MLB The Show. And um, he's obviously, Blake Snell is a pitcher for the San Diego Padres. And he got into the game, and he was going to be himself, and he saw what he was rated. What do you mean he was going to be himself? Like he was pl- like he's going to play as himself in the game. He's like, it's legit me, guys. Come on, play against me. Well, like it's him on, on Twitch, Twitch playing, but oh, okay. he was using his self in the game. I and see. so here he is now uh, commenting on his rating. Here we go. All right, here we go. How the heck am I 82 gold? What kind of crap is that? 82 gold? Bro, the disrespect. I, that's what I'm saying. Y'all, all right, can we get a, can we get a poll in here, please? Do you think I should be an 82, below an 82, or above an 82? Can we get that a poll? I want to see what y'all think. I think that someone says way too high. <laughs> I appreciate your, your opinion, but that's a weak ass opinion. What? Anyways, can we can we make? Sh- 
Yeah, he had a troll in there that this was like... This dumb motherfucker went to the internet and asked yeah, for a compliment. In a chat room. <laughs> he's on Twitch. You don't know how the internet works, huh? He's on Twitch and he's talking to the chat and he's like, let's do a poll. You think I should be higher than an 82 or lower? And everyone's like, too high. <laughs> and then he's like, I, he said, I appreciate your opinion, but that's a weak-ass opinion. So he's legit butthurt over his rating. Could you imagine if they had a comedian video game? I'd be just stoked oh to be in the God. video game. Oh, my God, yeah, me too. I don't care my fucking rating. I'd be like, put me as a 69, dog. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, I thought that was a funny video. And we'll have, uh, you know, you could put the video in the thing afterwards, Ash, if you, if you need to. Um, but yeah, man, that's just uh, some happenings around the the baseball world with video games. I don't want them to play. I want them to go out and I want them to fuck girls. I don't need them all to be Doc Gooden and do fucking drugs and shit while they're playing, but I want them to like drink beer and have fun. Yeah. I I mean, the last player I remember really being like that was probably David Wells. Remember Boomer Wells? He pitched for the Orioles for a while, the Yankees. I think he threw a no hitter, but he was like, I want to say his mom or his dad or stepdad was like a biker dude. And I remember when we went to the playoffs, and he was the one hanging out the bus window with the beer. And, you know, <laughs> it was he was that guy. And he was just a good time and a fun time. And I don't know, like these Where did days, that go? all it takes, it went away with cell phone videos. You got a couple guys out at the bar hanging out, mac- macking That's on so some true. chicks, and you got a cell phone video across the thing with some automated voice that everybody's putting on these videos and there goes your marriage there goes your career there goes oh, your yeah. whatever you're doing to fuck up over there especially if you're 23 and shit faced hell i saw a video <clears throat> that was doctored of tom brady saying uh you know a no-no word and i thought it was real oh yeah and i yeah. brought it on this fucking show <laughs> <laughs> and then people were like no that's doc- <laughs> that's fake and i was like well i wanted it to be real i thought it would be fun because he was talking to uh Ed Reed, actually, and he was saying, you're my favorite. The uh, uh, inner city. No. Fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh but it was fake. God. It was fake, yeah, so he course. didn't really do it. Um, but yeah, no, I know. I just think, like, something weird is happening. Again, midlife crisis type stuff, where when I was a kid, I remember, like, athletes looked like my dad. Mm-hmm. And then they would be drinking beer, and you'd you'd see them out and about. Smoking cigarettes? Yeah, they'd be like, they'd have a mustache, and you're like, that guy's probably, like, and now I look back, I'm like, that guy was, like, 24. Yep. And I thought he was, like, my dad's Yes. Age. When's the last time you've seen an athlete do, like, a fun Bud Light? Remember the guys, Dick Buckus, Bubba Smith, John? I saw one the other day. It was an old one, and everyone was in it. Euchre, Bubba Smith, Dick Buckus, John Madden. Everyone you could think of back in the day was in those fun commercials. Well, it's funny. I have a, a, a screen grab of, like, even just advertising in sports. Like, I have a screen grab of Ralph Wilson Stadium when they tore down the uh, goalposts and stormed the field. And you can see large as hell in the back. The biggest maybe advertisement in the stadium is a Marlboro one. They wouldn't have that anymore. Yeah, no. But beer when they NASCAR still have. NASCAR got rid of Skull Bandits, it was all Harry over. Gamp, baby. It was but all here, over. But you know what NASCAR has done since then? And I don't know if they've retracted this, but eventually, there was a point in the mid-2000s when they allowed liquor coming yes. in. So they had Jack Daniels. They had Crown Royal. Right. And then they kind of went away from that. But yeah, no, I I miss like I mean Dale Ju- I had Dale Junior <laughs> Budweiser <laughs> posters Budweiser, in my fucking yeah. room, dude. I grew up with that shit. But yeah, I, I wish they went back to getting fucked up and shit. Did you know this? Uh, South uh, North Korea is pulling out of the World Cup. I did not know they were pulling out. Why? Yeah, they South out? Korean officials say North Korea has told soccer's Asian governing body that it will not participate in the World Cup qualifiers. Uh, Kim Min Su, an official. Uh, from South Korea, I like how they have to do it through South Korea. By the way, do they do, do they not get don't they not get along? Yeah, they're making them do it. I guess so. South Korea is scheduled oh, to host scheduled North to Korea. Host, that's why. Uh, I guess they didn't want to do it because, like, if they lost this, this is what I'm guessing. If they lost to South Korea on like a world stage, they can't lie about that. They can tell everyone in North Korea that they won, right? But the world will know. see it and be embarrassed. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, and so, the whole world would root against them, too. Yeah, the North has virtually stopped all cooperation with the South and resumed testing of short-range weapons instead. So <laughs> that's Put good to know. Balls yeah, away. we're not going to do soccer. We're going to test these <laughs> missiles, so shut the fuck up. How about that? But yeah, so they, I mean, I, I'm surprised there isn't other propaganda that comes out. Like, Kim Jong-un's going to play all 11 positions, and <laughs> yeah. he's going to score all the goals and play goalkeeper at the same time, and they'll win 75 to nothing. 
I'm surprised they don't do anything like that because that's what his dad used to do. You don't see much about Kim Jong Un bragging about things like that. Like, remember his dad was always yes. like I. I remember he posted a golf scorecard, and he got like a twenty four. <laughs> He got like all hole in ones and like <laughs> his score was like a twenty four. <laughs> but I don't see Kim Jong un doing shot that kind of fun shit. Shot a nineteen today, yeah. I was off, man. Played eighteen holes, <laughs> shot a nineteen. What's up? <laughs> Fucked up on the on the six. Got two strokes on that bad boy. Fuck. But do you know who Bo Jackson is? Do I know who but one of my favorite <laughs> athletes of all time? Do you know Gen Z probably doesn't know who Bo Jackson is. There's an autographed mini helmet of Bo sitting in my office no right next door. I met Bo Jackson when I used to work at this hotel. It's the, it's the widest human being I've ever met in my life. Do you want to see a little kid that meets Bo Jackson who has no idea who he is? Fuck you. Yeah, let's watch. Let's watch this video. We live in Kansas in the winter. Mm-hmm. And wherever Dad plays. Mm-hmm. We just gotcha. I used to play for the Kansas City Royals. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Play for the Kansas City Royals. How old did you play there? But your dad was about your age when I played uh-huh. there. How old is your dad? 35. Yeah, so I played for Kansas City in 86, 87. So I'm way older than your dad. So, yeah, your dad was a little boy. He, he was young, probably younger than you when I played with I played with Kansas City. Yeah. Can you pause it real quick? White Sox and the Cow- so that's bad math on Bo Jackson's part. Because <laughs> if he's born in 80, if he played for in, them in 86, that's the year his dad was born. Yeah, that's right. And so, he wasn't 35. I just know that because I'm 35. He, still, when he, he got hurt before he's 35. Oh, well before. Yeah. yeah. So he was still a young. So yeah, he's. Mm-hmm. But this kid just couldn't care less. No. Keep it going. California Angels. And I played with the Raiders. Yeah. You ever heard of the Heisman Trophy? <laughs> That's the best college football player in the country. Give a fuck. I just looking that. at the distance. Like, when's this old guy gonna stop talking to me? Football at, on the professional level, yes. <laughs> you don't even know who the fuck the Raiders are. Oakland now, but when I played there in Los Angeles, I'm the only player to 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 make it to the Pro Bowl in football. In the All Star Game in baseball, and I'm the MVP of the All Star Game. That's pretty awesome. So, I've been there a little bit. Hmm. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, bro. Yo, pause it real quick. Dad, where's my game boy? How wild, by the way. Bo Jackson's like, you can tell he's really about. laying it onto him too, because he's tapping his hat. Yeah, like, listen, I'll... he's trying to just make a point. And he's like, I did some shit, and this kid's like. Not even looking at Bo Jackson. doesn't even want to be there. He probably doesn't like baseball. My dad makes me wear this fucking uniform and shit. Where's my fucking... I don't even want to be outside. It's like, yeah, cool story, bro. Great (laughs) story. That's cool. He's not even looking at him. He's And poor Bo Jackson's like, yeah, I played on the professional... Just like, you know, you can say the NFL dog. And he he really lays it home thick. The Heisman Trophy, everything. And And he didn't even list half of his accolades. Like, did you know I had a cartoon... (laughs) <laughs> yeah. How about a Nike campaign that's probably, arguably, the best campaign in the history oh my of God. campaigns? Just Bonos, forget about Nike. Bo knows Bo everything. Knows. What, did he, what did he not know, Bo? Hockey with Gretzky. But he did a, there was a... Um, he did like IRL or, or Indy racing, soccer, hockey, basketball, every sport. Mm-hmm. Bo don't know snow. That's what we always would say when he'd come to Buffalo. Oh, really? Yeah, we go, Bo don't know snow. <laughs> But that does it for sports. I thought Haven't that was I, a fun video. Have I ever video. told you the Bo Jackson story? No. I've never told That's you. That's true. You just said you met him, and I and I pulled the kid. Not even I was that. like the little kid. I was like, good, cool. This was, this was a different <laughs> one. This was when this kid's dad was a kid. Yeah. Um, I've told this on my podcast, but it's appropriate for yours. So one year when Bo Jackson is playing for the Kansas City Royals, we're in high school, and a, a gang of us go down to a ball game, and then we're in first place, and the Royals are in second. And that game, that night, the Royals beat us to edge us for first place. So we're out in the parking lot, and the Royals team bus is out there, and uh, there's this one black dude out there. It's just He's that guy, and he's just like, Fuck that, man. We still number one. <laughs> we still number one. And there he's yelling up to the bus. You know, we're all over there, high school kids. Like, look at this motherfucker. Just watch him. He's like, we still number one, man. 
And one of the guys is like, why don't you get up on the bus and say that shit? And he walked right up on that bus. Fuck. And he's like, fuck that, man. We still number one. And they said, well, you want to say that to Bo? And Bo Jackson stood up in the back and he goes, fuck that. We number two. And he got off. <laughs> He got off the bus. Bo Jackson, I mean, obviously he was a specimen, but he never seemed mean to me. No, he like, was I wouldn't be scared no, of him. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, I, I would be scared of him if I was trying to tackle him. The, one of the best quotes ever, he said, I, if my, you know, I love my grandmother, but if she put on some shoulder pads, I'm running her ass over. I love that know? shit. I'm running her ass over. And what, I mean, what did he... But that iconic poster of the shoulder pads with the baseball bat. I oh, mean, how yeah. cool was that? Dude, just the fact him and like, same with Dion, like playing yeah. two sports, that's like superhero at, shit. At a high level, and too, that'll not never like a bench happen guy. No. Yeah, exactly. And it's just something we'll never, ever Probably see not. again. And uh, that makes me sad. Um, although you see guys like, you think like, hey, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, those guys were like kind of highly drafted. In maybe John in Elway baseball. was back yeah. in the day too. Yeah. So they could have maybe, or they still could. And I've even heard Kyler Murray like make jokes or hint that he could just go play baseball someday, which is interesting. But people hate sports, and we talked about them for quite some time. Some I'm converting some people though. People who don't care about sports, they're paying attention. I like it because we've ha- we talk. But you know, I don't get to talk to people about sports. So when you come in here, you know, obviously I get a little in my own feels do you know what i'm saying like I it's do. fun i get to start let talking me ask about you shit. a quick question i didn't yeah. want to stop talking about sports but how about this asian dude i'm seeing on the mound who can pitch lefty show and righty? my god are you talking about show Otani who can bat and pitch or are you not talking- bat and pitch i'm talking about this kid i saw just two days ago who can pitch left and right whatever the batter oh. is he can switch on the hill and throw but i mean with velocity and everything, Accuracy. you know, he's got he's got an arsenal of pitches from both sides. That's wild, and I don't. I've I'm not sure on who you're that. speaking. I've of, seen the guy you're talking about because I saw him hit a home run, and I was like, "Good God!" Yeah, Show Otani is like doing Babe Ruth shit. Yeah, he really is. But, but this um, guy is a pitcher on the hill who can throw left or right. Hmm, I'll have to check that. Yeah, I don't know who that. Nuts. I don't. Is that the guy for the Ranger? I can't. I can't remember. remember. It's impressive but, uh, as shit. Though. Speaking of pitchers, real quick, did you see the guy? who was pitching against the Phillies, um, low-level pitcher, he threw a ball and it hit Bryce Harper in the face. I did. And then the next step at, he threw another one and it hit a guy. And, and people were like up in arms, you know, kind of like the Tom Wilson shit where they're like, get this guy out of here. He doesn't have any command <laughs> yeah, of the ball yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But I'm thinking, I'm like, this poor guy, he's got to be so fucked up. He didn't intentionally hit Bryce Harper in the face. So he's fucked up over that. And then he threw the next one and it was the same thing. So now he's like doubly fucked up. He's got the yips. Turns out Bryce Harper like texted the guy and was like, hey, man, I know you didn't mean to do it. If you want to talk to somebody, let me know, like just to clear his brain. Bryce Harper didn't have to fucking do that. That was so, I thought that was the coolest thing. That is cool. It's just nice when people like recognize something like that, especially a guy who's such a celebrity in the sport, reaching out to a guy who's just like a relief pitcher, you know? I thought that was very cool. Hey, folks, today's Josh Potter show is brought to us by ExpressVPN. And boy, oh boy, this is like some spy stuff right here. This is the best because it basically, I mean, incognito mode, for the record, doesn't do anything as far as hiding your internet activity. ExpressVPN does all of that. The reason I like it is because it hides your location uh, when it comes to your IP address. And your boy over here likes to watch baseball games. I've got the app, and it blocks out local games, which is the dumbest thing ever. And everybody knows it's dumb, but boo-hoo, baha, we can finally watch them with ExpressVPN because they don't know where the hell I'm watching it from. So I can watch Dodgers games, I can watch Angels games, you can watch your local your, your local team in your home market with ExpressVPN. And uh, ExpressVPN, it's just an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so your ISP can't see the sites that you visit, which is awesome. And uh, right now I want to help you get those things too. If you uh, you can protect your activity today with the VPN rated number one by CNET and Wired, you can visit the exclusive link that I have going up, expressvpn.com slash Josh, and you can get three extra months for free on a one-year package. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Josh, expressvpn dot com slash Josh to learn more and get that extra three months free on your one-year package. Today's show is also brought to us by the fine folks at Babbel. We've all taken some foreign language classes in high school or back in middle school that we don't remember anything or retain anything from. 
because they were pointless. They were really dumb, as a matter of fact. But Babel has found the secret uh, to not only make learning a second language intriguing, uh, but to make it easy to consume as well. And right now, uh, you can go on there and they've got 15 minute lessons that make it perfect uh, for you to learn the new language. They've got so many different languages to learn. Uh, Polyvous poly Francais. Yeah, I just I, I do now. Thank you to Babbel. And if you don't know what I said, it means do you speak French? Mm -hmm. So there. Uh, and now I get to speak French. And I can't wait. I'm going to go to a French restaurant uh, when I go out of town in a couple of weeks. And I can't wait to just drop some French on the waiter. I can't wait. I hope I get to meet the new draft pick for the Buffalo Bills, Greg Rousseau, because that sounds French. And then I can say some French stuff to him as well. That sounds wonderful to me. Do you know how Babbel works? It has speech recognition technology as well. So it can actually help your pronunciation as you do it. And they are sticklers. I got to tell you, you think that you can just skim through the, the voice uh, part? No. They're like, do it again because you got it wrong. <laughs> so they really make sure they uh, they get it hammered into your brain. You can start your new language by learning uh, or your new language journey today with Babbel using my promo code. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six freaking months, baby, uh, for just the price of three. Just go to babbel.com and use promo code Josh. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com code Josh for an extra three months free Babbel language for life. But let's can, let's move on. We've got some interesting news All to right, cover. let's do it. Yes, in the headlines, Adam Sandler waits at IHOP. Did you see that story? I love it. I did. You see his reply? Yes, they don't have all unlimited milkshakes. But <laughs> yeah, like, the, all you can eat is not a, doesn't apply to the milkshakes. How shitty is it that he got like outed for that though? Like the girl didn't know it was Adam Sandler, so she posted that that TikTok of it. I think we have the uh, visual of it, but she posted. She's like, he didn't. She didn't know it was him, and she didn't mean to make him wait. But I don't think that's so bad that he would have to wait. No, why? Well, and and look if. He's just not that guy. I've met him. You yeah. know what I mean? He's not that guy. He's the guy you saw. All right, well, we're going to get... You could see him. He's like, how long? All right, we're getting the fuck out of here. Yeah, like, and he was a bad dad. He's just a regular dude. And that's not a diva dude. move, by the no, way. That's, that's just, everybody would have left That's every hot. dad right there. Like, how long? Nah, we're bouncing. I do the same shit. Like, nah, For we ain't sure. waiting that long. No. Who and knows what he had going on? I wouldn't expect them to on. recognize me through a mask or whatever either, if, especially if I'm Adam Sandler. But it's... um. I love it. I see him. I see videos of him all the time. People see him driving on the street, and he's like, hurry up, go ahead. Yeah, you can take a picture, and he lets him take a picture. Yeah, that's great. It's love kind it. of on along the lines, though, of that video, uh, same TikTok thing where it was like, I unmatched Ben Affleck because I thought it was fake. Did you see that? I did see that. What, was that really real, though? Yeah, and then, the, <laughs> the and then Ben Affleck sent there? a message going yeah, like, it's me it was on something. Raya, the celebrity one. Oh, 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 oh. By the way, Raya, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> They said been, no to I've you? I've been waiting. I'm just waiting. I'm probably going to get a no. I mean. Oh, you have to be cleared? Oh, yeah. You have to You have to get. They have to asked, you have to have someone who's on Raya, like, recommend you or, like, Have you been recommended? You? Yes. All right. And You're allowed people. to say who? Uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan Dune. Okay. Ryan Dune. Uh, hit me up about that. So I applied just to see what's up. No anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting on. And because I, I don't even like dating apps, but I was like, yeah, this one's a celebrity one. I heard Nikki Glaser talking about it and shit. So I was like, I'll give it a whirl. See, just to see who's on there. You know, a, what if I get like Demi Lovato or something? Some of these girls might want to get a little weird and throw down with your boy. So I'm pulling for you, bro. I hope oh. I get on it. But I mean, so far, not so good. It's been almost a year. I mean, maybe Corona or something. Wait, it's been a year <laughs> since they've approved you. So they didn't even do anything. I applied. Still in the queue? Yeah, I'm like the guy who's like <laughs> waiting for that job. No, oh, yeah, TJ Maxx is going to call any day now. <laughs> TJ Maxx. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would have been more mad if Adam Sandler didn't wait for IHOP, though. If they were like, come this way. You know, like I would have. If, yes. if I'm Adam Sandler in that position, I would have gone, I'll, I'll wait. I don't want the special thing. Do you hate that? I, I've never, I've only experienced it minimally, obviously, more so in Buffalo than anywhere else. But I don't like when they like comp my meal. Why? You know when they're like it's on the house or whatever. Was there a mistake on them on their part? Though? No, no, I just don't oh. like it, and I, I, I just even if there's a mistake, it makes on me their feel part. uncomfortable. I want to pay for it, you know, because like. 
Well, see, I don't mind the, the if someone fucks up the meal, I'll definitely take the. Well, no, I'm saying if, you're, still if they're doing it for recognizing you. Oh yeah, no, 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 I'm with you on. That. I'm not talking about. Like, <laughs> I don't if have they to worry about up. that. That doesn't happen to me. No, not one person's ever to offer me. Really? A free... I'm Buffalo. I've had some dudes... Not even in Baltimore. Shout out in Baltimore, yes, and shout out to the two dudes years ago at the um, Portland um, Comedy Festival, Bridgetown, who sent over bacon. Oh. It was nice. They sent over a plate of fucking bacon. It was fantastic. And, I they, love- and they did this too. I look back, the, the guys like these guys over there sent it over. And I was like, what? Some dude sent me bacon. I look back and they did one of these. Like, That's awesome. I take free. <laughs> I do take free drinks often. Yeah, I don't know about that. If it's unopened. I mean, they don't bring it to you. The bartender brings. It. That guy wants to buy you a drink. I go, oh cool, I'll have a beer. And then they give me a beer, and I go, you know, I love that. I was drinking one night. This is the this is the old Irvine Improv back in the mm. day before the new big one. And I was at a show, and uh, we're done. We 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 go out, and right across the way from there, in that that Spectrum Mall, was this like Fox Sports Bar or something like mm. that. And there was still some game on or something like. Let's just go over there. We'll drink there. We can watch the game. Yeah. And this guy comes over, and he was a nice guy, but he was one of those drunk guys, too drunk telling you how much he enjoys you and the show and will not take no for an answer when he says he's buying you shots. Oh, shots. And I just was like, yeah, I'm not, I, no, you're getting them, you're getting them, you're getting them. And he was so wasted that I literally was just, you know, sho- throwing, throwing him on the shoulder. Throwing That's him the right. He wasn't even looking. He wasn't even looking. I, and I'd be like, Whoa. you wait for them to do it and then you go, yeah, Shoot. get a second oh, one. Like, yeah. This oh. girl's watching me laugh and I'm like, just fuck this guy right here. Yeah, right. Or you, if you know the bartender, you'd be like, or yeah. like Coke or whatever they put it in there. I just had that one laying around. Nice. I don't know why for the bar stories. But did you know Hitler liked peeing on women? He liked peeing on them? That's what they just I mean, put out it a, surprise? he killed people. And that's what I'm just, saying. Uh, peeing why? That, that's such a step back. Do we need to report on everything about Hitler's right, yeah. proliquities or whatever that thing. word is? You <laughs> murdered millions of people. What the, who gives a fuck if you ate yeah. your toenails or peed on people? And Everything let's not it, lump it doesn't... people who like getting peed on or peeing on people yeah, in no with shame. Hitler. Uh, thank you. I appreciate That's that. what they're That's doing right. with this story, yes. and I'm annoyed by if it. If you like to be pissed on, it does not mean you hate Jews. Like It's the main headline of this fucking story. It's crazy. Unless someone finds out something that tops what Hitler did. None of it should be in the news. And this is a sign that they should stop making Hitler documentaries because it's from a documentary and it also talks about how he was like incestuous with his niece. It's like, we don't need to make Hitler more evil. Yeah. You're just digging up more shit to be like, isn't this guy a real piece of shit? Yeah, we know. He killed three million Jews. We don't need the rest. We don't. <laughs> That's the end of the list. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right there. <laughs> the I'm going to keep citing the that. Yeah. Schindler's. <laughs> we don't need to add any more shit to Schindler's list. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go into the story real quick, though. I just want to. The claims were made in Hitler's secret sex life. That's a documentary coming out, which is a broadcast on Sky History this past Sunday. Who cares Sunday. what he fucked? <laughs> I don't at all. Right at all. You think I'm going to tune in and be like, let's see what Adolf Hitler was? You know who cares? Fuck. People who like Hitler. Yeah. Who They're like, oh, yeah. You know, I loved what he did with the Jew thing, and uh, I'm gonna now. I want to see what he was into. The Jew thing. Oh, I was into that too. I'm into piss as well. <laughs> I'm into pissing on me. No shit, Hitler's into piss me too, bro. <laughs> it's wild. Uh, this woman reportedly claimed Hitler demanded simply repulsive things from her. They have this woman on the thing. That's kind of interesting. Could you imagine it's a talking woman to, who had sex that, with Adolf Hitler is alive still, and they're talking to this lady? Um, let's let's see real quick. Former Hitler ally Otto Strasser, who later broke with the party, went on to claim the tyrant liked women to urinate on him. Well, that's just that's just yellow journalism right there. He's, <laughs> he's just simply trying to smirch the man. Uh, he said Gelly was among those who had been forced to partake in it. Gelly is a woman, apparently. Let's, it doesn't say. Yeah, right here. Where's that? With his niece, Gelly. Oh, this one. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it was his niece. Ugh. Yeah, jump in if you need, know any more than I know here scrolling through this. That's why I like papers. I'm better at reading the papers. Mm-hmm. We'll get some papers soon. I found out from a forest ranger that it's actually good to use papers. Why is that? Because it, it keeps them in job. It keeps them in a job because they have to keep like rejuvenating the trees. All right. Keeps them employed. I don't know. Just one person's take that made me feel validated. That needs a job. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I, they don't talk to the niece, obviously, but it would be interesting to have a conversation with a woman who fucked Hitler. That would be a documentary. That's a documentary. Yeah, I want to know what's going on with her. It's got to be a documentary yeah. about her life. Like, did you fuck him before the shit went down? During? After? Because you got to think above? though, he's the leader of Germany. 
So that's like fucking Bill Clinton. She, the, you know what I'm saying? Monica Lewinsky style. Who can, looking back, how can you degrade Monica Lewinsky for like succumbing to such a thing? I don't know how we did even in the time. I was a little kid, so I don't remember culturally like how they, but you know, Jay Leno's making jokes and shit. It's like, of course Monica Lewinsky sucked the president's dick. Yeah. You know? Of course some random German woman is going to be like, let the Fuhrer piss on me. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> let my uncle, let my my uncle, uncle Fuhrer uncle. piss on me. <laughs> well, this particular one, but I mean, I'm sure he was doing it with other people outside the family too, you know? You don't just piss on your niece. You piss on everybody. You know what I'm just mm-hmm. saying? I'm, I'm thinking that's like a, a common thing for him. Uh, <laughs> well, this is a fun little tidbit. Uh, apparently, she told the film director, Alfred Ziesler, uh, she kept kicking him as he lay on the floor and he was begging for more. Hitler claimed he abstained from sex and opposed prostitution, apparently, but he actually invited sex workers to put on a private show in his mountain retreat. He had that dope Austria pad. He did? Yeah, it was pretty sick. And uh, he had porn addiction, apparently. Which is weird because in the forties, porn must have sucked. I mean, and how much of it you get? You just get in magazines. Like, what do you? It getting? must have been like reels and shit. Especially in Germany, they had the ones with the shit. That's the thing about Germany; they invented shit yeah. porn, so the piss is like a degree less. Nothing. Yeah. So, I like, why no. would they even put that in the headline? I don't understand. The Führer's personal medic also reportedly gave him amphetamines and bull semen to increase his libido. So he was just taking rhino pills essentially Fuck. before they were uh, bull semen. That's remember, what's in this shit, I think, Dude, right? I remember one time um, at UPS, shout out to UPS, Baltimore Hub, Primary One, Joe Avenue, uh, we had a guy unloading one night, and the package broke open, and it was fucking bull semen, and it got on him, and he was pissed. And he's a superhero now. He was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> now his dick is eight feet long. <laughs> his dick's eight feet long, but he was pissed. Damn it! And then all of a sudden he's like, he's like oh. "I don't get my own shit on me." He said, "I'll never." <laughs> <laughs> I don't get my own shit on me. That makes me wonder: for a person who's adverse to semen, would they prefer to have their own than someone else's? <clears throat> and what? And what do you mean? Just on you? Yeah. <clears throat> Who? I don't care about sperm. My jizz. I'm saying, like, you oh, can, yeah. I, I could put it on my face. I could oh put it on, God! I don't <laughs> give a fuck. <laughs> I don't I don't like piss though. Piss is like and I'm not kink shaming, but it's just my personal like piss, keep it away from me. Jizz, I can put jizz in my ears, I can put it up my nose, I don't give a fuck. Your own jizz. Yeah, I don't give a yeah. shit. Girls are like you know, they you know, they, I mean, I'll kiss one afterwards, I don't give a shit, you know? Do you not care? You're like keep that shit away from me? No, I mean my shit's my shit, but I don't exactly. rub it all over me and Well, I'm not I'm not doing I mean, that. this is not a great I'm not uh, doing that proactively. Listen, this I'm isn't just a great promo it's... for Raya here right now. <laughs> Listen, Raya, I, w- I love- If anybody's out there still- It's good for your skin. I'll teach them. Oh, boy. But yes, another headline from the news, another international headline, this one coming out of the wonderful city of Tehran in Iran. Mm-hmm. Uh, the capital, Sheik, I believe. Sheik's home. Iron Sheik. Iranian police arrested 16 men and women at a mixed gender party in the northeastern province of Khorasan Razavi, the semi-official- uh, Tasnim, I don't even know that word. Tasnim News Agency reported on Tuesday such parties are illegal under Iranian law. Drinking alcohol is also illegal, and Muslim men and women who are not related cannot mingle or dance together in public. Uh, the Tasman report quotes a local prosecutor uh, as saying that there were 16 detained while they were dancing at a party in villa in a villa in uh, Golbahar. So we got a little footloose action happening in Iran. You know, yeah. <laughs> got a cook. Kevin Bacon came to town. Got him. Yeah. I wonder if that's like the first time they had such a party. I can't believe you can't have like a mixed gender party in a part of the world in 2020 where there are people having babies. Yeah, I people mean, people are fucking. Of course, well, can't you have, have to fuck party. your wife still, and she has to have her face covered up, and you do it through a sheet. I don't know if that's true, but it's so funny the that alcohol is illegal too. It's just like I don't know people who always say like oh come to you know they name a town in america they're like oh you don't want to come to my shit town it's like i will come to all the shit we don't have shit towns in my opinion we're not having people arrested for mixed gender parties yeah exactly. you know no matter you can name the shittiest part of the united states and it is a lottery winning that you live there compared to a place like this do you know what i mean of course it's just so wild i have a, a muslim roommate who's gay 
which they don't like in Muslim <laughs> yeah, land. That's why he's I don't here. know if you know that. <laughs> and uh, he drinks alcohol too, but it's so funny. He'll like do Muslim shit. And I'll be like, oh, Muslim I don't shit. know, like whatever they, you know, holidays or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, you do that, you know. It's just weird. I go, uh, he goes, oh, I have to do that for like my religion. And I go, huh. And he goes, yeah, but I'm not a good Muslim. I fuck boys' butts and I drink alcohol, you know. So like how good of a Muslim am I? So it doesn't make any sense to me. Do you know what I mean? Like if you're not going to do the main parts, why even do why the go, Yeah, why parts, do any of it? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Have you ever met religious people like that in Christianity where they're like, yeah, a lot of people in my own family were like that Catholic. They make I mean, especially concessions. Catholic. Do you think these people aren't having premarital sex or living together prior to that? It's all against the Catholic religion. It's no. so weird, though. Some people, like my grandma was, I remember my cousin moved in with her boyfriend, and my grandma was like, don't tell grandma about it. Right, don't tell. But that's gone now. Right. That, well, when did that change? But still go to Easter Mass. Still go to Christmas Mass. Right. You know what I mean? That sort of shit. Like getting your... Getting your what you think is getting it in. Yeah, my parents did performative religion for sure. Like we wouldn't go to church ever, but they would do the Christmas or whatever. Or right, my dad, yes. when my dad was like uh, caught with a little yeah. infidelity, he kept putting those stuff in those envelopes a little harder <laughs> at the church. If you know what Your I'm saying. Your dad got caught cheating and he did that. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I, I remember going to him. I'm like, you haven't been to church in years. Why do you keep sending in the money? He's like, I fucked up a lot. Over the year. I gotta hope I can buy my place up there you know (laughs) i'm putting a down payment on heaven so he he still believes in that in some way it's like a superstition (laughs) he has to send the church money but i don't know when my parents get older maybe they'll move to that villages down in florida have you heard of this place? Uh uh-uh. uh Oh wait, is this for? A, it was built a while ago and long now, long while ago. And yeah, it's, and it's now, its now own the people are gone, thing. right? And they can't rent them or anything anymore. No, no, you or, can or still move in there. In. It's just old. It's it's typically well, a place where elderly go to live in Florida. It's mm-hmm. one of these huge communities where elderly can go to in their retirement age. Mm-hmm. My buddy uh, Matt Bergman, a comedian friend of mine, his parents just moved here, and I have for years read the police blotter of the villages for old bits on the radio and stuff like that. And there's always wild shit happening there. And one such thing happened recently. A 77-year-old villager was arrested in an alleged racial tirade after throwing her Whopper sandwich at a Burger King employee. And these are the kind of things that happen down there. This is like the kind of community that you live in. (laughs) Judith Ann Black of the village of Pine Ridge was apparently enraged over the thickness of the tomato served to her Whopper sandwich. Uh, on a Friday evening at a Burger King restaurant, she confronted Burger King employee as the counter or at the counter and was yelling at her. According to the arrest report, the Burger King worker tried to convince the Texas native to calm down and said she could not help her if she did not stop yelling. That's an often used tactic, like just lower your voice and we'll get to the bottom of things. The worker turned uh, her back on Black. Oh, it's weird that the woman's name is Black. <laughs> It is, dude. <laughs> I just realized that. I'm just saying, it's really throwing my brain in a pretzel. Oh, yeah, read it. Read it how it says. It's the sure worker is. turned her back on Black, who threw the whopper at the employee, hitting her in the back, the report said. Shut up. Shut up, you black bitch, the woman told the employee. Black proceeded to use the N-word before storming out of the restaurant. Oh, wait a minute. I can't tell who the hell saying Right? <laughs> The Burger King manager, a worker at Burger King, and the, that, I guess she could use that as a defense. She goes, my last name's my Black. Mas- my last name's Black. I was treating her like a member of the family. Yeah. You dumb Black. <laughs> That's what I say to my, my sister. She's the dumb Black in the family. <laughs> yeah, but what about the N-word lady? That's what we, that's our nickname. Yeah. My name's <laughs> Judith Ann N-word. Put the tomato down, Judy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who complains about the thickness of a tomato? This tomato's too thick. You fucking. See, I black. <laughs> and then to get racial about the thickness of the tomato. Aggressively is just racial. Wild. About it. Like, why? But you know, on this show, we defend Karens. Oh, shit. And uh, this is my defense of a Karen today. Again, I think she was just using her last name. Miss Black also stated that she called the victim a stupid black bitch. (laughs) She put that one in the statement. Yeah, I called her a stupid black bitch. That's what I call my mom. My mom's a stupid black as well. We're the blacks. I'm Judith Ann Black. Uh, She was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center and released after $2,500 bond. 
77 and put that shit in the report. You keep saying this, you <laughs> idiot woman. Idiot woman. Uh, idiot. Mm, tough look for the God black damn. clan. <laughs> Wild story. Well, we have one left here, and I don't even know if it's a good one. I like that one to end on, but hey, I like having Ryan here, so I thought, what the hell? This Please guy, continue. do we have a picture of this guy? Yes, we do. Uh, Sean, good, because this guy, I just think the picture of him is the whole story. I love that you call him a Sean, I call him Ash. I asked him, I go, why does he call you a Sean? <laughs> you got different names for I just, oh, I this don't know. motherfucker here. This guy, hey, what do you think he did smile. first before we even look yeah, at yeah, the story? Yeah, what did he do? Okay. What did he, guess well, what he did? I'm going to go with Mortician. Mm, okay. I'll give you a little hint. He's a lawmaker slash substitute teacher. That's his prior job? <laughs> That's his current job. Well, oh, I guess okay. pr- oh, I guess yeah. former now. Oh, you wanted me to guess. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was guessing what he did before what you were about to tell me. Oh, no, no, no. I was saying guess what he, I'm going to tell you what he did, but I, I was see. telling you his job. Now guess what his offense was or why he's in the news, I should say. He looks nice. So I'm going to go with. I'm not going to go pedophile. I'm going to go with maybe beating a kid. You got it, yeah! sir. Yeah! Ding, 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 ding. That smiles too nice. <laughs> and Ryan Sickler gets it right. I trust him with my kids. <laughs> now, what's interesting about this story, and Ashan, maybe you can help me out with it, having looked at it too. Uh, this is a, a Kansas representative, like I said, a lawmaker, and he also does substitute teaching. Uh, he released a statement about his battery incident. He was charged in Franklin County. Uh, He says that the incident was staged. The incident this week allegedly happened in a high school classroom. Parents and students described it as a bizarre behavior video show. This man, Samsel is his last name, uh, uh, ranting at students, talking about sex, suicide, and other inappropriate things, even using profanity in front of the students. Students reported that Samsel specifically targeted one teen boy, shoving and kicking the student in the penis. The school district said it's aware of the situation, according to a letter sent to parents Thursday. At this time, we are prevented from commenting uh, further on this situation. This is not due to a lack of transparency, but due to lack of or due to privacy laws that prevent us from doing so. That's what the superintendent said. The Republican represents Kansas House District 5. Uh, which includes Wellsville. We learned today that Representative Mark Samsel was involved in an incident and law enforcement was contacted. We are not yet aware of the details, as according to the House Republican leadership. Uh, but I want to get to the part where he says it's staged here. Uh, I have my version, you have yours, I see going by. Yes, I have my version, you have yours. The kids, as we discussed in each <coughs> hour before the fifth hour, and then also in the beginning of the fifth hour before anything newsworthy occurred, each as theirs. So how do we find the truth? It's probably not uh, to be listening to the yellers and screamers, is it? This is the statement, by the way. This is what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Look how quickly they get headline news today. They come after everyone, our educators, our law enforcement, our doctors and frontline workers, our judges and court personnel. They attacked Christianity. That's okay. While calling for God to be removed from the classroom. That's okay. He's really making platitudes here. It's like, how about you... uh, Tell us why you punched the kid in the dick. Why'd you kick my son? <laughs> why, are you just, why are you kicking my son in his dick, bro? Uh, it's not going to work, folks. He keeps going. Do you like how our world looks right now? Do you like how, or do you like the skyrocketing divorce what? rates, the teenage suicide rates? Of course we don't. But how many of us pause to change our own actions? Any of you attended a hashtag zero reasons why meeting lately? You should. That group is amazing. Get to the part where you punch the kid in the dick, bro. Any of you volunteered to substitute teach hashtag for the kids? It's a financial sacrifice. This statement is ridiculous. Good God. I just see. I can't read. I just see words going by. This thing's going. This is still part of his statement. Ashan, does he ever say anything about it? Why he punched the kid? I didn't see it when I was looking. No one read this statement. That's probably his tactic. I'm going to make it so. uh, Look at it. It's still going. It's still going, dude. I'm not. so long. I was like. "Mm." Yeah. At the end, he says, yo, mama. Yep. At the end. I mean, basically. He's going to jail, and he has nothing to do it. I'm off to tr- at the he he wraps it up after paragraph. We just I just scrolled forever. Forever. He wraps it up saying, "I'm off to church. Take care, everyone. Let's go Royals." <laughs> and he does the look. <laughs> clap, 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 clap. <laughs> <laughs> it's written in there. This asshole. Should end it like this. Now watch this drive. But yeah, he. I mean, I did. I don't know. I, again, I thought it was an odd. Uh, this is what's happening in coronavirus. Is 
people are losing their fucking they're minds. They're losing their fucking minds. People are losing their minds. Have you noticed anything at schools? Like, has your kid's gone, kid gone back to school? Yeah, she's back now five days a week. How relieved are you? Oh, man. I can't tell you. This is the beginning of week two, I think, no, three. This might be, get, we've done two weeks back now, and it is just, it's life changing. I have the day again to work. It's to been, get what, shit a year done. of not having that, right? It's been four. 14 months, I think, of not having, not being able to, yeah, a year of not <laughs> being I remember you able telling to, me, you're like, this shit is was wild. It fucked with me for a long time. Really? Like, yeah, because my daughter doesn't read, you know, she's six, teen. <laughs> 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 you're like, you're just realizing that you're <laughs> retarded. You're like, I can't do math. I learned uh, I couldn't do math now that my kid's homeschooled. Man, it was, it was tough. But so I'm so glad they're back. But, um, no, if you're asking me, I haven't seen any wild shit yet. Not anything. Because now that they're back at school, I thought it would get like. And I'm wondering how kids are dealing with it, especially younger ones that have been removed for so long. Now that they're back in school, are they getting like. Do they feel a sense of freedom? Is it anxiety? It's an interesting. I just time. know this that the first day they had it back, <clears throat> excuse me, my daughter said, I don't want to go to aftercare. I was like, your ass is going to aftercare. <laughs> like, even if, if I had to choose between school ed- actual education and aftercare right now i'd pick aftercare you got you were educated for the last year mm-hmm. and you missed human interaction and your friends and shit like that watching kids get in trouble you get in trouble right don't run you know and another adult has the power and they're telling you to do something that's not your mom and dad it hits different and um so i went to pick her up and i you have till six but i got her at like five thirty, and she's like dad can we stay longer and i was like of course yeah, yeah look at that how of that course works, right? i knew you would i knew you would yeah, that's great. I I mean, I'm hoping that everything gets back to It's coming. We're going to be back very soon. I you know, if would they say New York July 1st it's on, maybe by September we're really really close and hopefully by January we're 100%. Let's we'll go, see. baby. I'm all We're about close. it. We're close. And uh, thank you, by the way, for coming on the program. Thank today. you for having me here. I love having you here. Folks, you know, we're we're in this uh, transition and I think that we've done a fantastic job so far. Uh, obviously, we're working out a few kinks so things are going to have ebbs and flows i'm going to get the papers back better soundboard coming i'm using my shitty somebody accused me of not really using a shitty laptop because i have this where i read but folks it's on it's on i'm using this for reals so i don't want to it won't be there very much longer (laughs) uh but we're getting through it and uh thanks so much to uh, sean's doing like three people's jobs yes to do this fucking thing on all our shows exactly so uh there's uh, been a little bit of wrinkles but we're, we're working them out and I, and I can't thank y'all enough for being patient with us and I can't thank Sean enough and as well as you again thank you for having us You're, here in my the Night Pants dude. studio I love it I love Studio Night Pants and by the way Night if Pants you want to help with all the kinks or anything like that by uh, being a, a roach reporter sending in Karen videos sending in your stories your articles your queefs of the week your music whatever you want Show at gmail.com is the email to do that and uh please plug all your things yeah ryan sickler.com ryan sickler on all social media please my show and josh subscribe to the youtube channel don't just watch subscribe people always ask me what's the best way to help the show the best way to help the show is to subscribe and to fuck with the sponsors and to uh, give positive reviews and that's it i mean that's really all you have to do to help the show be successful it really is incredible that subscribing takes two seconds and is inconsequential on your lives it means the world to us <laughs> the <laughs> world and it takes like i said two seconds but i'm going to be this week in omaha nebraska at the omaha funny bone june 9th i'll be at the improv in tampa bay june 10th i will be at the improv in orlando all those tickets are linked on my social media twitter is at j underscore potter instagram is at josh underscore potter come out to the shows i love you i can't wait to see you out there and uh, thank you again for watching the program please to be subscribing as ryan mentioned to both of our shows and we will see you next tuesday